A disclaimer before the video starts. This video does contain images of a flickering CRT. If you are sensitive to this kind of video footage, viewer discretion is advised. Hello and welcome to Cobalt Retro Tech. Hope you're having an amazing day. Now, what are we doing today? Well, we are actually going to be fixing the remnants of a failed Cobalt Retro Tech video. At least, currently failed. Now, here's my situation. A little while ago, I had attempted to do a whole video on PowerPC Linux because I was inspired by one of my favorite YouTubers, Action Retro, to poke around at PowerPC Linux. Now, I was actually successful at installing and uh, lightly using PowerPC Linux, uh, specifically Debian 8, on this machine. However, I can't find most of the footage at the moment, and I was going to reinstall Mac OS onto the G3. Anyways, in this video, I'm going to walk through the process of wiping the Linux install that's currently on the G3 and restoring what I had going on with macOS 9.2 before I wiped it for Linux. But don't worry, I will be doing, there will be PowerPC Linux shenanigans in the future. I just need the right machine for this. Perhaps if I can find most of the footage from the previous attempt, you'll be able to see why, but for the time being, I'm just going to focus on putting Mac OS back on this machine. Now you can see right in front of you here that I'm actually running Windows XP, and this is on Clippy, the star of the My First Pentium series. And this is because I need to create a disk for Mac OS 9. So what I've got going on here is a thread from the Mac OS 9 Lives forum, which has a download of the Mac OS 9.2.2 Universal Install for G3s, G4s, blah blah blah, pretty much everything that can run Mac OS 9 on G3, G4 processors. So I've already gone ahead and downloaded this image and a program called Image Burn uh, that will help me correctly burn this image. Uh, to a CD so I can actually start installing Mac OS 9 to this iMac. So I just launched Image Burn here. I'm going to hit Write Image to the File, or Write Image to Disk, rather. I'm going to go ahead and pretty much leave it at the default settings. I'm tempted to decrease the write speed, but I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm going to go ahead and choose the source, which should be in my Downloads folder. Mac OS 9.2.2, there it is. I'm gonna go ahead and start writing the disk. And this is not gonna take too long as this is a CD image, but it is gonna take some time because this is optical media after all. So I'll be back when this is done. So the disk is done. I now have a Mac OS 9.2.2 Universal CD going on here. Now, at this point, all I need to do is turn on the iMac and start booting from CD. Yes, I, I know the disk is not in there right now. I'm just pretty sure I left something in there. Sounds like I did. So yeah, you can see here that it is running Debian 8. I don't know what it's doing right now, but uh, it is indeed running Debian 8. But we need it to not run Debian 8 right now. Keyboard is not responding. So I'm, I'm just booting Debian right now, I guess. So yeah, it's a slightly better screen over there. This is ev evidence of me being able to install PowerPC Linux. This is, uh, again, this is Debian 8. This would probably run a lot better on a G4 or G5, but I don't have either of those right now. 
And I guess right now I'm just booting into Linux so I can tell the G3 to eject this CD. There's probably some kind of keyboard shortcut whatever the hell. Yes, I know I'm disconnected from the network. I kind of don't have this connected to the network, and it doesn't always have to be connected to the network. Okay. So, uh, we can see here, just uh, checking the peripherals, uh, just in case it is a problem under macOS. You can see, I can type. It is recognizing a couple letters and all that, and the mouse is working. So that's good. So the only reason why it wouldn't work under macOS... Oh! Looks like the Debian CD is still in the system. Oh, there we go. You didn't see it there, but uh, the disk tray is a little sad. I guess I had forgotten that my copy of Debian 8 was actually in the iMac. It's actually been quite a handful of months since the last time I used this. Um, if I do end up finding the footage with me installing this operating system on the G3, I'll edit together what I have and I'll throw it on the channel. Otherwise, this is going to be just reinstalling macOS and I'm going to call it good. So, now we have the macOS disk here. Nothing personal with Debian, it's just this specific version is not a great fit for the iMac and I just want to use Mac OS with this machine. Debian isn't saying it, it's not a great sign, but it also is a Mac disk. I'm holding C here, that's actually working, so that's cool. This is obviously a third-party OS disk, but I'm okay with that as long as it works. I guess I don't have to hold C anymore. I would prefer to point the camera at that display here, but macOS does not output a resolution by default that this panel is okay with, so we're stuck with a flickery CRT right now. In the future, I'll probably poke at the settings on this camera a little bit to see if I can make the experience a little bit better, but there's nothing I can do about that at this time. I keep wanting to say Mac OS 9 lives, but uh, no, it lives, as far as I am aware anyways. Okay, Mac OS is recognizing the keyboard, but not the mouse, but fear not, because I know for certain that my mouse here does work with this iMac. I think I've featured it on this channel before. I just gotta unplug it from Clippy. I kind of find it weird that uh, a PC keyboard will work, but a wireless mouse does not. But at the same time, it's probably a driver thing because this version of Mac OS is a lot older um, than the version of Debian I was running. How could I save it? It's a read-only kind of thing. Weird. Uh, drive setup. Not mounted. That's probably the disk. So I'm just going to go ahead and initialize this. Let's see what I can do with uh, custom setup. Ooh, this looks a little bit like disk utility. I don't know if that's on purpose or what. Mac OS Extended, ooh, there's some AOX options, and Linux options, ProDOS, weird. Okay, we're just going to leave that uh, Mac OS Extended, is there a way I can change the name? Probably not right now. Whoa! The yeah, iMac just squeaked at me! Uh, selected disk can be used as the startup disk only for power PC computers. Obviously. We have the disk. We are going to change its name to something a little obvious. Mac OS. I'm going to go ahead and double click on the disk here. I assume 
that there's some kind of setup application on here. Oh. It looks like this is set up not to install a system like it would from an official Apple disk, but restore a disk image with the system already set up. That is interesting. Okay, er erase Mac OS before and restoring. Restore in place, restore saving original items. Uh, I just wiped the disk, so there's that. Um, any special options? Parts to copy, system folder, everything else. Okay. So I guess we are actually, I guess we're actually going to be doing the title of this video. We are restoring this iMac. It's not my image, um, but I do, somewhere on my network, I do have a backup of the previous install. And I'm probably going to be fishing out at least a couple of games and other applications and extensions from that folder, but I'm not going to fully restore it as I believe that install was actually being used by another person and therefore kind of had a lot of bloat for a system like this. So I'll be back once this is done. Installing and that only took like seven minutes, which that's actually a little impressive. Seems to be booting up just fine. All right, I think it determined that I am on a G4, because or G3, excuse me. I believe that is a G3 wallpaper. Oh, what's it doing? I don't know what it's doing. What is it doing? Is this some kind of intro cinematic thing? Yes, it is. Thankfully, it's muted. Okay, well, at least the restore image is that first time setup. Cool. I do not want to register. It's not even connected to the internet. I don't want to register this machine. Apple doesn't give a about me setting up an iMac G3. This thing is like 21 years old. I don't think Apple cares about me setting up Mac OS 9 on this thing. Let me go ahead and rename this to Mac OS 9 instead of 9 Live. There I go again. It's not lives, it's lives. And at this point, I can eject it and put it into my book of CDs. I got this at Walmart a little while back because I wanted to have a larger thing for organizing my discs because I figured I would be making at least a decent amount of discs, disc images uh, for a bunch of different systems and possibly housing software as well. Uh, this solution is probably a bit overboard, but I'd rather be overprepared than underprepared. So that is the entire process of restoring an iMac G3's software of a non-Mac OS environment. There's probably a way to do that within a Mac OS environment, probably just sticking in a Mac OS disk when the system is running, but if there's something getting in the way of you being able to just do it right on the system, you can always just download an image off the internet I would recommend the Mac OS 9 libs form, then going through the process I showed in this video. 
I think for now, though, this is going to be the end of this video. Thankfully, this is a little bit shorter of a video. I know some of my videos lately have been very long, uh, so it's going to be a little bit of a breath of fresh air to put out some shorter videos. If you like this video, you can go ahead... <clears throat> If you like this video, you can go ahead and like it, subscribe if you want to see more, and if you want to support me a little bit more directly, I have some cool music that you can listen to, and a Patreon page, both linked in the description below. The Patreon page starts at just $1 a month, so if you would like to support me, please consider that as an option. And lastly, speaking of patrons, I need to thank my Kilo supporter, Indian Mac, for supporting... Cobalt Retro Tech. Your support makes Cobalt Retro Tech possible. Thank you. And with all that being said, thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.